Welcome to Investigation 3.2, Solving More Linear Equations, and we were comparing costs in this one. In the, in the first part of the investigation, in Part 1, this is Part 2, we were comparing costs of two different tile companies. In this investigation, you're going to be looking at um, whether or not an equation has only one solution, if it has a lot of solutions, or zero solutions. Essentially, we're determining if... If to put this in perspective, we were looking at a graph, we're looking for that point where things intersect or where they potentially stay parallel to each other and never intersect or where there may be just one line is describing all of the information. And so we're going to be looking at that. Our very first set of information. For each equation, determine if there are zero, one, or infinite solutions. So for this investigation, or this video, we're going to be just looking at um, these three scenarios and sort of finding takeaways that we can then write down into our mission and really understand and keep sacred sort of thing. So let's do this first part, or let's do this first question. We have 4x is equal to 2 times 2x. So I see a parenthesis here, so let's take care of that first because that's how our order of operations kind of works. Need to get rid of those parentheses. So 2 times 2x, that would get us 4x. So we have simply 4x on the left-hand side is equal to 4x on the right-hand side. We can then think, what numbers could I put in for x? Can I put in 2 for x and have each side be the same. Well, if I said 4 times 2 is equal to 4 times 2, I'd find that 8 is equal to 8, so that works. Well, could I also try x is equal to 7? 4 times 7 is equal to 4 times 7, or 28 is equal to 28. So again, it works out. So it looks like, in this case, there's not just one solution, and there's definitely not zero solutions, but we can say there's infinite solutions. We essentially have a situation where one side of the equation is equal to, equal to the exact same thing as the other side of the equation. So if we were to graph this information, we would end up having one single line for our 4x, and then on top of that we could say we have a second line that is 2x times 2 so we literally have one line written in two equivalent forms so there are infinite solutions for this particular situation let's look at the next one 3x plus 4 is equal to 2x plus 1 let's do the math again we have parentheses that we need to deal with so let's do just that 2 times 2x is equal to 4x. We still have our plus 1. I'm going to actually write this left hand or right hand side in blue. And we have 3 plus 4x. So from here, let's get our x's on one side of the equation. So we're going to subtract 4x from one side, subtract it from the other side, and if we do that, we have 3 left over on our left hand side. 4x minus 4x is equal to 0, so then we have 1 left on the other side. And what I see here is a statement that doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't ring true at all. 2 or 3 can never equal 1. It's not going to happen. So this can't work. So if you ever get a solution that ends up not making sense we can say there are zero solutions. So this is a situation where if we were to graph it, we would find that we have one line and then we have a parallel line. So we could say these lines are parallel. They'll never intersect. Therefore, there's never a location where they're going to cross and so the lines are parallel. There's no solutions. Let's look at one last equation. We have 2x is equal to 3x minus 7. So let's do a little bit of the math. We have 2 times 2x, or we can say that is 4x, is equal to 3x minus 7. 
From here, we can subtract 3x from both sides. So 4x minus 3x would get me just 1x, and that is equal to 3x minus 3x is 0, or negative 7 is left over. So x is equal to negative 7. So in this case, there's one solution. We have one situation where we have a single x which is equal to one number. There hasn't been another number that comes up. There's not a ton of different numbers. There's not any, or there's not a situation where there's no numbers. We have x is equal to negative 7. One solution. So our takeaway from this, and this is what should be written down in your missin after you finish this part of the investigation. I believe it's question C. When the most simple form of an equation is a true statement, for example, 4 is equal to 4, or for our situation we had said it said 4x is equal to 4x, then there are an infinite number of solutions. In other words, we had so many different forms of x that x could actually be taken out of the equation because you'd say 4x minus 4x is equal to 0, or is, is, is equal to 0 equals 0. So essentially... 4x is equal to 4x. We'd subtract 4x from both sides. And we get 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, there's an infinite number, infinite number of solutions. 0 is always equal to 0, so therefore we have the same line. You'll also end up with situations of like this. If the most simple form of an equation is an untrue statement, for example, 4 is equal to 13, then there are no solutions to that situation. That means there is there are parallel lines. They will never cross, they will never intersect, they're always going to be parallel. And our last takeaway, if the most simple form of an equation is a single value for x, for example, x is equal to 3, then there's only one solution for the equation. So there's Simply, we end up with x plus 3 is equal to 2. We could subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 1. We have one solution for that scenario. So that means there is one side of the equation could match up with the other side, and we'd end up with an intersection, and we'd find where x was, what x was equal to in that situation. Write these three takeaways down. If you need to, pause the video now. And then after that, get started on investigation 3.2, and this is particularly, particularly part C. As always, if you have any questions, please ask, and I will talk to you later. Bye!